Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nice to see all of you here. Just uh, a note, uh, I, I have been... Uh, uh, I've been vaccinated and boosted, and I got a test uh, this week. I'm going to see my mom uh, today, so uh, I'm, everything's good. So my mask is off while I lead worship, and uh, hopefully that's okay. Um, my mom fell and broke her hip. Five times she's broken hip, so at 98 and a half, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge. But she's doing okay, I think, but I'm going to help get her moved into a rehab place. Uh, tomorrow, so uh, you can think about us driving up there. But um, and rainbolts, you know, nice to see you. Uh, these guys were at St. Stephen's when I was there, and now they're here. How exciting is that? So Merry Christmas! Yay! Yeah. Well, last time I saw these guys, it's a little so welcome. Uh, I think everything that you need, you should be able to have on the screen. Thanks to. Adam and Wayne back there at our AV booth, and, uh, and Seth is going to be uh, helping out as well. So I think we're all set. We can begin with our uh, call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. For God has done wonderful things. God has not forgotten to love us all. Even the ends of the earth have heard. Make a joyful noise. Break forth in song. With strings and horns. With the roaring sea and everything in it. With all the land and everything in it. The floods clap their hands. The hills sing for joy. Thank God. God is coming to set everything right. Justice for everyone. Everything fair. Sing to God something brand new. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In the Word was light, and the light was the light of all people. Let us pray. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we are going to be doing kind of lessons and carols this morning, and so there will be a series of seven readings, and the first reading comes from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. We sing. Mm -hmm. 
Our second reading comes from the book of Micah, chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. He shall be the one of peace. Together we sing. The third reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy he will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And so we sing. reading comes from Luke chapter 2 as well. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The fifth reading comes from the second chapter of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And so we sing. reading comes from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Together we sing, What Child Is This? Our seventh and final reading of this Lessons of and Carols is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, and I'll ask that you rise for its reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of humanity, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And we sing. Well, uh, welcome to the first Sunday of Christmas. It is, uh, it's nice to see you gathered here. I know that it's a little bit of an unusual time because um, how often do you come to church on Sunday morning and you just worshiped like uh, a day and a half ago? Uh, so I know many of you were here on Christmas Eve for the 4 o'clock service, for the 6 o'clock drive-in service, or for the late night uh, 10 o'clock service. And uh, we decided to do lessons and carols today uh, Tim and I, because uh, if we had followed the lectionary, our gospel reading today would have had Jesus in the temple at 12 years old. And how weird is that to say, oh, baby Jesus was just born, and then a day and a half later, Jesus is now 12 years old. So we wanted to sit with infant Jesus just for a little bit longer. Um, and it allowed us the added luxury of singing all these wonderful Christmas songs. Um, so it's nice to hear you sing these carols together. Uh, you know, we get to sing such a small subsection of them during uh, December leading up to Christmas that now we get to explore a whole lot more of them. And so that's been really nice to sing with you guys today. So um, today is, um, yes, unique. Uh, yes, the first Sunday of the season of Christmas which is a neat time. Um, the hustle and bustle of Christmas as far as presents and stuff is over, I think, for most of us. Uh, you probably have opened all the presents, have emptied out the stockings. I know my kids did. Uh, they kind of tore through those in a matter of minutes. Um, 
and they enjoyed them. We had a great time. They loved opening all these gifts and playing with each other and stuff. Really, really nice day. But now that that time has passed, uh, the culture starts to move on. Yeah, some people probably still have some yard decorations and stuff or some lights strung up, but you'll start to see those coming down over the next week or two. Whereas now that we're in the season of Christmas, we observe 12 more days of Christmas until we get to Epiphany. So we gather, and we have this special time, I think, where we get to focus on newness as well as things that have happened already. We're at the end of the year. Um, you know, the next time that we worship together, it'll be a whole brand new year, 2022, December 2nd, when we see each other again. And so this is our last time gathering for worship in 2021, so we might pause and look back at all the things that happened over the last year. We also might uh, approach the new year with hope and expectation. And as we have that transition right now at this particular time of the year, um, all the, uh, the singing we did earlier really fits because my sermon has a couple songs to illustrate points, and so this is a, a highly singing service we're part of today. Um, this transition of uh, ending the year and ending December and getting ready to go into the new year reminded me of this song by a band called the Counting Crows, who were um, a band in the 90s. So for some of you, that is very recent, and for some of you, that is a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but they have a song called Long December, and I think about these words during this last week of December every year. He sings, it's a long December, and there's reason to believe maybe this year will be better than the last I can't remember all the times I tried to tell myself to hold on to these moments as they pass. I think about it at the end of December, hoping that next year will be better, especially when we've gone through a year like this, right? But also, I think of the words of Mary when she's there and all the visitors come in to see this newborn baby, and she says, uh, the Scripture says of her, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And I hear the words of these songs, hold on to these moments as they pass. These moments will not come again. And so we cherish them. And the moments that have already gone, you cherish and recall those lived experiences, those shared memories. Uh, Tim and I were exchanging stories about that between the services as they were watching um, some old videos they had uh, that they had recorded home videos on VHS. And if, for those of you who don't know, it's a very ancient recording thing of like a brick-shaped thing. Um, but they had a, a great time, you know, laughing and crying and remembering those times. And we did some of that in our household as well uh, as uh, my boys were around, a six-year-old and ten-year-old, and looking at pictures that I'd forgotten we had from when they were babies and toddlers and our six-year-old Adlai going, oh, I used to look like that. You know, he's getting a kick out of like what one- and two-year-old Adlai uh, looked like. So uh, these are moments. This is a great time, a great um, a chance for a little bit of stillness in the chaos. So my hope is that you had some of those moments over the last couple of days and that you might have some today here in the season of Christmas to just sit and hold on and treasure those precious moments as they pass. This season hopefully will be a little bit different than uh, all sorts of other experiences you have. You know, there's, there's the surface level experiences that we have that we sort of let pass without a whole lot of interaction, without a whole lot of thought. But then there's those more serious, deep level experiences we have that make their way inside, that are deep down internalized, and they cause us to have a profound experience and reaction. Can Christmas be profound for us? After so many Christmases we've lived through, can the incarnation of God in our midst cause actual lasting effect? I hope so. And uh, I hope that this might help a little bit. Um, we often think of the incarnation of God as God coming down from heaven. And that notion reinforces the idea that God's up there, all perfect and holy and separate from us. And we're down here, 
in the muck and mire, separated from God and uh, struggling, muddling along in our own depravity. But I heard a different perspective recently in a podcast that I found really helpful. There's a great thinker, his name is Richard Rohr, and uh, he is uh, Franciscan, he's Catholic, and he's a powerful thinker and has a wonderful way with words. And he said, instead of viewing the incarnation as God coming down, perhaps it might be helpful to think of it as God coming out from within like a flower that emerges in bloom and unfolds from its previous state of being sort of shut up and being hidden. So God emerges from within creation. God was never absent. God was always here. But now God is made known. Now in Christ, God has revealed the creation to contain the Creator. Isn't that nice? I think that's a powerful, maybe helpful way to think of the advent of Emmanuel, God with us. God did not descend like Christ did to the dead after he died and before resurrection, but rather emerged and revealed the love with which all creation is imbued. So, in the spirit of singing, I'm reminded of another song. This is an Icelandic singer. Her name is Bjork. She was also uh, sort of at her height in the 90s and the uh, early 2000s. She had a gorgeous voice, and she, she argued that all is full of love. And it's, it's not that the message is not being sent, but if we have a problem and don't hear the message of love, it's perhaps that we haven't been able to hear it through all the static that surrounds us. So she sang, All is full of love, you just ain't receiving all is full of love, your phone is off the hook. All is full of love. And I hear that song, and emotion washes over me. My prayer for you, my dear friends in Christ, is that we are indeed able to hear those words and truly believe that all creation is full of love, and that it is communicating unbridled love for you as part of itself, as part of the glorious thing that God has made and that God has become part of in the Incarnation. God is here. God is love. It overwhelms me sometimes, and my hope is that it will also, even just for a moment, overwhelm you as well and wrap you in its arms as you fall headfirst in the warm embrace of a God who is here, a God who cares. A God who is with us. Emmanuel. Amen. Thank you.
Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Let's share that peace with one another. Take out your communion stuff, uh, the little plastic off the top and the foil beneath that, and take out your... Uh, wafer and we will continue now with our communion. So dear friends in Christ in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table where Christ meets you. Eat, rejoice, and be glad. So I invite you to take the wafer first and you can partake. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Yes, it is. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, just uh, another thank you for coming to worship. Merry Christmas to all of you, and uh, look forward to, and hopefully to sharing a good uh, holiday season uh, coming up. Just a reminder that uh, our format for worship won't change this service, but we have one more week of drive-in worship before we come inside. We feel we're going to go out with a bang because next Sunday it looks like it could be single digits. So uh, it, uh, it, it might be the, the way to say we're going to put our drive-in worship to bed for the winter, uh, but we'll be inside at 8 o'clock worshiping uh, at, uh, starting on, on January 9th. So again, um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We will see you in the new year next Sunday. I invite you to receive God's blessing. God, the Creator who delights in you, Jesus, the Savior who is born for you, and the life-giving Spirit who shines on you, bless you and keep you in hope and peace. Amen. Go in peace. God's light has come. Shine for all to see. Thanks be to God. And we sing our closing hymn, Cold December flies away, hopefully. Hopefully.